you're back. It's time for the next chapter. We've been talking about stress. We've been talking about more circle. We talked about plain stress transformations. Did you like it? That's not anybody's favorite, so it's okay. All right. So, you know, we said that stress was directional. We could find stress at any angle we wanted with these equations over here. If you remember, I told you that I really hate these equations, right? I don't like these at all because I can't remember them, but I do like me some more circle because that stuff works really good. So we're moving on from stress transformations. And what are we talking about next? It's not too far off. Now we're talking about strain transformations, okay? What's, what is strain? Do you remember? Strain is what? Elongation, a change in length. We called it just deformation, right? Okay. And just like stress was directional, guess what? Strain is directional. Okay. Let's see. I got me a beam here. I got a very flexible beam. But let's say I have a beam and I'm pulling on it and I'm twisting on it and then I'm putting a load in the middle on it, right? And uh, all kinds of weird, there's a really weird load on this thing, right? And I want to know right there in the middle, where is the strain the maximum, right? Well, I don't know what this weird, complex, crazy load you had on that and they're bending and all kinds of stuff. I'm not really sure where the maximum strain is. And so what do we do? Well, we use these strain transformation equations to go get things like the principal strains. Those are those maximum strains. Or maybe the maximum shear strain. What was shear strain? Do you remember that guy? We talked about, I was looking for my slinky, right? When we had something that it was at 90 degrees, if we put a load on it here and a load on it there, right, it changed angles, right? And that change in angles we called shear strain. Remember that guy? Okay. My students call it dead fish. <laughs> Okay, so how do you calculate dead fish? Okay, so guess what? There's a whole set of equations for strain transformations. Now, here's the good news and the bad news. The bad news is the strain transformation equations are not on the equation sheet in the front of your book. These are on the equation sheet in the front of the book, okay? Well, but how are we supposed to remember those? Look closely, look very closely, those equations over there are the same as those equations over there. What's different? Here's what's different. Anytime over here you see sigma x, over there you're going to see strain x. Anytime over here you see sigma y, over there you're going to see strain y. And anytime over here, now this is the one thing that's really wacky and different, okay? So don't miss this part. When you see tau x, y over here, over there, what do you see? You see gamma xy over 2. Okay? It's over 2. So if you just make these substitutions here, and this is the only tricky one to remember right there, okay? If you make those substitutions into these equations, ba bam, you get those equations, okay? You get the strain transformation equations. And guess what? They work exactly the same way as they did when we reviewed this for stress transformation equations. So therefore, you know, a lot, of, a lot of professors don't even teach this section. They just say, yes, yeah, strain transformation, just do it the same way as you do stress. Next, right? But there's a few things in this chapter that are different. I want to go over it a little bit with you so you're not lost, okay? So I'm not going to do an example on the equation method, right, of using these and to solve a, a problem, okay? Because it's the exact same way you did this. All you do is plug the numbers in, right? And then solve for these, these uh, things here. For strain the x, strain y, and then gamma x, y over 2, okay? So if you remember that little, little substitution, that's your secret decoder ring, okay? If you remember that, you can get from those equations to those equations, piece of cake, right? Same equations, okay? So that is strain transformation. Now, so there's two methods here, just like there was before. Number one, the equation method. Number two, oh, there he is right up there, Mohr's circle. Now, we love Mohr's circle over here to do these. Instead of using those equations, I love to use Mohr's circle. 
can I use more circle for strain transformation the exact same way I used it for stress transformation? And the answer is, ah, yes, you can, okay? It's the exact same method. As a matter of fact, I think what we'll do is let's work a problem and I'll show you how to do it with more circle, okay? Again, I'm not gonna work this problem. I, I've got a little bracket up here. Let's say this is a little shelf bracket, right? I got a little shelf that's on this, okay? And I, and I have a strain gauges, I have some strain gauges right here, and they gave me these readings. Now these readings are weird, aren't they? 400 mu, what is mu? Remember, mu is micro, 10 to the negative six. So there's another secret decoder thing you need, right? When you see mu, that's the same as 10 to the minus six, okay? So move your decimal over six places, right? So you'll see this written as 400 micro strains, negative 250 micro strains. And a positive means what? It's stretching in tension. A negative means what? That it's stretching in compression. It's, it's, it's changing length in compression, okay? And then gamma XY, that shear strain, 310 micro shear strains, okay? So that's what that means. If you see micro, now you know, right? So these are all the different ways that they're gonna like try and trick you on a test, give you something that you've never seen, but you're like, hey, phew, I got Hanson on my side, baby. You can't trick me, yo. <laughs> all right, here we go. Let's, uh, let's see if we can work this problem up here and let's find some things. Let me, uh, let me erase, I'm gonna erase these equations over here, okay? Because I don't need them. And we'll work more circle over here and see if we can solve that problem, okay? All right, here we go. So I've made this little problem here. We're gonna find the principal strains. What is that? That's strain one, strain two, okay? Epsilon one, epsilon two. And then we're also gonna find um, whoop, sorry. We're gonna find this guy, max, okay? We're gonna find where the, the shear strain is the maximum, okay? So let's see it. So those are our readings that we have. That's what we have to go off of. And we gotta find these things. Now, just like we did before when we did more circle, okay? We're gonna use these things up here. So here's how this goes. We're gonna make us two coordinate points, just the same way, okay? 400. And this is all, these are all micros, okay? So I'm gonna leave the micro off because we, we gotta put a micro in our answer, okay? So don't forget that. This one over here, 310. This one over here, negative 250. This one over here, negative 310, okay? All right. So there's my two coordinate points, my X and my Y coordinate points, if you will. So I'm gonna plot that just like we did before. Now more circle has changed a little bit and that the axes are different, okay? This is now the strain axis, okay? Where before it was the stress axis. And this is gamma xy over two, okay? Over two. Don't forget that. Gamma xy over two. Now again, this is positive down, this is negative up. So just like it was in more circle world, okay? That's positive, this is negative, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, whatever, eight, nine, okay? All right, so let's plot our points here. Number one, 400 and 310. All right, 50, 100, 50, 200, 50, 300, 50, 410 is here-ish. And 310, 51, 52, 50, 300, and no, it's 400, is it not 410? What? Now I'm about to recount that. 51, 52, 50, 310. Okay, there we go. So there's one point right there. So that is 400 and 310. Oh, I've already messed up, haven't I? I've already messed up. Why did I mess up? Can you catch the mistake? Did you see it? Yes, I know, I'm human too, okay? So, you know, relax. <laughs> this guy right here, right, has got to be 
gamma over two. Don't forget that. So what should this 310 really be? That should really be 155 and negative 155, okay? So when I plot it, it's over two. Now, when I go out, when I go back to report it over here, what do I have to do? Because when I solve it over here, it's gonna be an over two number. So when I go back to the real world out of more circle, what do I have to do? I gotta multiply it by two. Don't forget that. Look how easy it is to make a mistake. I just did it, right? I'm gonna leave it in there because, you know, now you know, I'm human. I'm sorry. I know you have me on a pedestal. <laughs> 5,100, 155 is like right there. Okay, so that's better. Now we're not messed up. That's 400, 155, and then negative 250, 51, 52, 250, and uh, 51, 55 is like there, there, okay? So now we'll connect those two guys together, okay? And we're just gonna do this exactly like we did before, okay? This point over here, negative 250, 155. So where's the center? Okay. 250 plus 400 is what? 650 divided by 2 is what? 325. So this is 325. This is 325. So where's that center point? I'll tell you where the center point is. It's on, on, clear. It's 325. Uh, oh, Lordy. You know, let's do it like this. Let's do 400. Let's do that. 400 minus 325. I put it, I just put that in my calculator. Very good answer. Okay. That number, so the center point right here, that distance is 75. So the center of our circle is at 75. Okay. Center of the, so what did we just find? What did we just find? We just found the average strain, okay? It's 75 micro strains, okay? They didn't ask us for that, but hey, we found it anyway, didn't we? Now from here, right, we, can, we create a circle. Oh my, okay. I don't know, that's, that's a fabulous circle right there. You couldn't draw that better with a compass. Come on. <coughs> Choke myself up. Okay. We need the radius of this circle. So the radius is equal to what? Uh, 325 squared plus this distance over here, 155 squared, square root. How much is that? 325 squared plus 155 squared, yes darling, divided by, oops, square root answer, 360.1, okay? And again, that's micro, right? So what did we just find? We just found the radius of the circle, so what did we find? Right, what's here and what's here? Well, I'll tell you what's there, gamma xy max, right? So, so over here, gamma x, y, max is equal to, how many of you want to write down 360 micro? That's what we got. No, that's what we got for gamma over two, right? So if we go back out to the real world, I've got to multiply that by two, right? And this guy is 760.2 micro shear strains. And that is one of the answers I'm looking for. That's this guy right there, okay? Now what do we need? We need the principal strains. We need these two fellers right there. How do we get those? Piece of cake, man, right? It is the center point, right? So strain one, strain two, this is exactly the same thing we did for stress, right? Is equal to the center point, 75, right, plus or minus what? A radius, right? One radius gets me over here. There's strain one. One radius gets me over here. There's strain two. That's it, okay? So 75 plus or minus 
360.1 micro. All right, so here we go. Strain one is equal to what? 75 plus 360.1. That's 435.1 micro. And principal strain two is what? 75 minus 360.1. Is negative 285.1. Okay. Now you might think, hey, shouldn't you put some units on that? Remember, what is the units for strain? Well, it's like millimeters over millimeters, isn't it? So really and truly, it's a unitless, uh, a unitless thing here. So the strain, because it's in deformation per unit length, okay? So that would be our final answer. So there's, there's the part three and there's part one and part two, okay? This should be a review because we just did this in this exact same way as the last ones we practiced our tails off on, didn't we? You should be dominating these problems by now. Let's go! All right, we'll see you on the next video.